Yep, I've been diving into hinges again, and this one is the pin hinge or door hinge. So I'm gonna talk about how you can design this type of hinge in Tinkercad and design it in a way that you can print it in place without the need for supports. All right, there are many different names for this type of hinge. I've seen this called a barrel hinge, a door hinge, or door style hinge. I've heard this called a pin hinge, but essentially, this is a type of hinge that allows for really just one type of movement. Again, probably the best way to describe it is like a door hinge. If you were to print this up, you would have to print this up as several different pieces here. The two halves of the hinges would come together and then held together in place with this pin that would slide down through the middle. Now with this design of hinge, this is not a print in place because you would have to assemble it later. And of course you would see the need for some supports here as you printed up these different pieces. Today though, we're gonna try to come up with a similar type of hinge that you can print in place and requires no additional supports. Now in order to achieve this print in place hinge with no need for supports, we need to follow some fundamental rules here. The first one is in dealing with overhangs and we want to eliminate overhangs that require printed supports. So that means that we will need to design our hinge so that anything that needs to come across is angled up so that when it is printed, each layer will go on to support the next layer up and prevent the need for supports. The other thing that we can do is bridging, meaning that you can stretch the filament across a gap or a space, providing that it is drawn straight across and that you have structure on either side that the filament can attach to. But we can use this to our advantage. So with those rules or guidelines in mind, how could we redesign this so it could be printed up in place without any need for supports? Now, when it comes to this print in place type of hinge without any need for support, if we take a look at something like the sphere here. Now, when we print this sphere up, we can see that the overhang is much more gradual. You've got this angled sort of start here. If we were to imagine printing up this ball or this sphere, you would see that we might need some supports down here because this is a very shallow angle here. But as you get to this point up here, you might not need supports here because these layers that are here would be enough to hopefully support the layers on top. And that these layers of filament here would be enough to support the layers of filament that get printed on top. And as a result, you might not need supports for this part of your sphere or ball. We can use that to our advantage and create these joints by using elements of something like a sphere or even a cone. All right, so let's play around with this concept. So let's bring one of these hinge halves back here. So let's take this part of this barrel hinge here and let's play around with this whole idea. So the first thing I do is I just take this and I create a duplicate of it. So control D and I turn the duplicate into a hole. This is going to be what we're gonna to use to create the cavern or the indentation for the sphere so it should be able to rotate freely in that hinge. So what we need to do is we need to make the hole for the sphere larger than the sphere itself. So what you wanna make sure is you wanna have a significant amount of space between surfaces that you do not want to connect or fuse together when it's being printed. And a general rule of thumb that I've heard of has been about 0.3 millimeters off of each surface. So you would need a gap of 0.6 millimeters. Now for me, I often go a little bit more than that. It will be dependent upon your printer and your slicer settings and the speed at which you print this. I often go a little bit larger than that. So for a sphere that is 20 by 20 height and width and depth, I'm gonna make the hole for this one millimeter larger. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna select the sphere here, the hole, and I'm going to press and hold the shift key as I press on one of these markers. So that way when I enter in 21, it will be applied across all the dimensions of that sphere. So you can see there, it's not a lot bigger, but hopefully it is big enough that it will prevent these two pieces from fusing. So let's just select both of these and I'm going to align them. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna align them just to see how much space I have. Yeah, so about 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. 
That should hopefully be enough. All right. Next, we're going to insert this into this part of the hinge, and we will incorporate the other half of this hinge in a second. But just to illustrate what I'm doing here, let's first of all get rid of this hole because again, this is not going to be required for this hinge. So let's just double click on that. There's the hole there. I'm going to delete this. There it is. All right. Back to the grouped piece there. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is let's actually permanently ungroup this because I want to align this sphere and hole with these round hinge parts here. So let's ungroup it there. And I'm just going to select one of these. And I'm going to align this sphere and hole with it. So I'm going to press and hold shift so that I can drag my mouse across it and ensure that I have both of those selected. And then I'm going to click on the align button or L and I'm going to select this round piece here because I don't want this to move. It's set perfectly in place right now. And I'm going to make sure that this aligns to this round piece here. So the sphere and the hole of that sphere should move to this piece here. And height and as well like that. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sync this into this round part here. And there are a couple of ways that you can do this. You can just simply select both the sphere and the whole of the sphere and just use your arrow keys to sync it in and eyeball it into that space there like this. Something like that. And again, I want to make sure that this rounded surface here is not going to need any supports. So for example, if I had it out like this far, this bottom part here is going to be a problem. So we're going to sync that in some more and using the arrow keys. Now, I'm using the arrow keys here just to make it simple for those that are just getting into this. But if you are familiar with the ruler tools, certainly that is something that can definitely help you here and be specific in terms of how you want to align this. And if you want to get to know more about the ruler tool, I will also include a link to that at the end of this video. Let's just use the arrow keys for now just to make it a little bit more straightforward for those that are just getting into this. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a duplicate of both of those. So I'm going to select both, control D, and same thing, I'm going to move this into this other one here. And again, I'm just eyeballing it. You certainly can use the ruler here if you want to make it much more precise. That's the first half of my hinge. Next, let's bring in the other half of this hinge and let's see if we can get this thing to work. This is the other half here. And what I'm going to do is we're going to align this up so that it sits perfectly in line this way. Actually, maybe what we need to do is select one of these rings here which is still a separate piece, and then select this one, which is still all grouped together, and I'm just gonna use the alignment tool here, and I'm going to align it, select the one that is already in the perfect place there, but I want this hinge here to be in line with that outside edge there, so I'm just gonna click this. I think that's as good as it's gonna get. Now, this is the part now where using this tool up here, if I select any object, using this tool here that says hide selected, this now becomes a very important tool. So you can kind of see what's going on inside of this because right now everything's concealed. I've got the two hinges together here, but I know that there are spheres and holes for these spheres buried in here. But I want to be able to see these spheres. So the first thing I want to do is let's just take a look and Find this big hinge here. I'm going to make this thing disappear. Let's see what we can see. So we're back to this sort of viewpoint here. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start grouping parts of the hinge here together. Now, this is where you need to be really careful about what part goes with what. So for this hinge, I want these orange hoops here to have the solid sphere sticking out of them. 
So, and I want them also to be connected to this red plate here. I don't want the holes of these spheres, I don't want the hole to impact this. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna select these holes and I'm also going to, press shift to select the other one, I'm also gonna make them hide or disappear temporarily. This is what I want. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna select all of this and basically group them together or control G. Now let's take this and make them all reappear again. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna select this blue piece here and I'm now gonna make this disappear so we can see the other part to this. And this is what we see. I want the holes to be grouped up with this part of the hinge so that it creates this space or cavern or indentation for the other half of this hinge. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna select these and group them all up. So I've got something like this. And let's show everything. I think this might hopefully work. And here's another trick I like to do, just to see how these edges all line up. I select everything and I just turn it into a hole so that way I can see all the different edges there. Now, just a quick thing here about the hinge, because we sort of jumped ahead here a little bit. In designing this original hinge, I need to be really aware of the spaces between the two halves of this hinge. Because again, these rounded parts of my barrel here, or cylinder, need to be able to move freely independently of each other. So that means I needed to give a little bit of space between this rounded part here, and this next rounded part there, and this rounded part here. So again, just be aware of that. I also needed to make sure that there was space between this hinge plate here and the other half of the other hinge there. I didn't want it to be close enough that it would actually fuse to this other hinge. So spaces and gaps and all of that kind of stuff becomes very, very important here. All right, this is our hinge. And if we designed it right, I should be able to print this up in one piece without any supports. Let's see if this actually works. All right, just finished printing. All right, let's see if this actually worked. Let's peel it off the bed. Ooh. Yes, it did. All right, so here it is there. This is the, the hinge here. Doesn't want to come apart, which is good. So it worked, print in place, no supports. But before we leave this, a few other things. So once you get the hang of this, you can start to really branch out and modify these hinges as you see fit. So for example, this is one I was just working on here. And this is just the first part of it, but you can see the same type of design here. But this time I opted to go with the cone shape. And in fact, it's a cone where I lopped off the top there. And in this situation, I actually have it on both sides of this part of the hinge here. And I made this part of the hinge really narrow. This is essentially going to do the exact same thing as what we did before. And if I zoom in here from the side, you can see that I should be able to print this up without the need for supports because again, this is coming out at an angle. So these lower layers of filament should support the layers above it and not require the need for supports, which is great. But that's just the first part of the hinge. The second part of the hinge is over here. Now this part of the hinge, I basically took those cones and I created holes from them. So let me just go back to this side here. And what I mean by that is I took this and I duplicated it just like I did in the previous example that we worked on. I created a hole and I just made this slightly larger. So let's say I made this 17.6. And because I pressed shift as I clicked on these white boxes here, that chain should also impact the other dimensions here proportionally. And before I go any further with this, I just need to make sure that I center this hole. Center it here like this. Is that everything? Like that. There, I think that is centered perfectly. And then the back of this is resting on that surface there. Yes, so right now this hole is set up perfectly and I just basically on this second part here, use that hole in order to create 
the divots or the holes where the cones of the first part of that hinge are going to rotate in. And if I just ungroup this, you can see. So there are the holes there and on each side. You wanna make sure you're grouping the holes and the parts of the hinge correctly so that for this part of the hinge, these holes are going to provide the indentations on this part of the hinge, but when I group this part of the hinge, the holes that I have here are not gonna be part of that. I simply just want the cones themselves grouped up on this side. So I took that hinge apart just to show you the two halves there, but together, let me just bring this over here, but these are the two parts put together. And I just wanted to make sure that there was enough space and gap between these two parts so they do not fuse together as they are being printed. Now the final thing I had to do was just make sure that this part here could also move about freely. And this part here was a problem because this is actually fused to this piece here. So the final thing I actually had to do is I had to take this round part here, make a duplicate of it, turn it into whole, and actually make it larger just so I could carve out just this little space here. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'm gonna show it to you right here. Something like this, again, to ensure that this purple part of the hinge was going to be able to move around freely. And so if I group this together, just so you can see it all together now, just like that, there you go. I should now have enough clearance for this purple part, we're gonna make it disappear, to rotate freely inside of this hinge and not rub up or when it gets printed, literally become fused to the other part of the hinge here. So that was it. So obviously I'm just focusing in on the hinge here. I really haven't gotten into what I'm attaching to each half of the hinge. It could be the top and bottom part of a box where this is attached to the lid and maybe this part is attached to the rest of the box here. Or maybe this is the start of some sort of articulated creature that you're going to create. And so, for example, if you're going to do that, you can use the tools to help you make that happen. You can duplicate this as many times as you want and create many different copies of this hinge that you spent so much time working on. So let's just do that. Let's say I wanna create some sort of articulated chain here, for example, that involve these hinges here. So let's say I take this and I duplicate it. And I'm just gonna use the arrow keys here, but you certainly can use the ruler. I'm just gonna move this to let's say right around there. Now, if I press duplicate again, it's going to duplicate this piece, but also its new placement. So if I do control D, again for duplicate, you can see now that I can just simply, let's just refocus this here, create my long chain of hinges. I can make changes to this. I could add details or other pieces here to make this some sort of articulated creature. That this is also a print in place project and just by looking at these details, it will not require you to use supports for this. Now, if you go ahead and start adding other details to this, just be aware that you might require supports depending on your design. But let's see how this prints out. All right, so the print is done. Interestingly, this was not apparent in the drawings that I made in Tinkercad, so I guess the walls were thin enough that as this part started moving around, it was enough to break the seals there, but Let's see if this actually works. I'm gonna pop this off. Ooh. Print in place, no supports, and uh, it actually works really, really well. You can adjust this. I could make, I could have made this wider. I could have made this some sort of articulated creature here. This similar hinge could have been used for a lid on a box, anything. Possibilities are endless. Very happy with that, glad it worked. And until next time, take care. Good luck with the designs.